You're listening to Witch Wednesdays, a semi-weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Join your host, Steph, on Wednesday mornings to chat about seasons, Sabbaths, and all new witchcraft topics to help you make your life more magical. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph, and I have a guest here with me today to chat on a topic that is fairly new to me, Um, so I learned quite a bit by reading his book. So I'm going to turn it over to him so he can introduce himself and let you know where you can find him online. Hi, everyone. Uh, Stephanie, thanks very much for having me here. Uh, This is uh, Dr. David Shoemaker. I'm uh, a teacher and author in the tradition of Thelema, which is um, the religion or philosophy, depending how you look at it, uh, founded by Aleister Crowley many years ago. Um, I do uh, an occasional podcast. Um, I've done it since 2010, and that's called Living Thelema. You can find that wherever you subscribe to podcasts and also a uh, YouTube channel. That's T-H-E-L-E-M-A, livingthelema.com. Um, and um, I'm also the prolocutor and chancellor, so the sort of the visible head of the order of the Temple of the Silver Star, which is a magical initiatory training organization patterned after the Golden Dawn and uh, with with uh, Thelema as its central reference point. And the uh, the one-to-one teaching and training organization, also founded by Aleister Crowley, called uh, the AA, not Alcoholics Anonymous, but a different AA. And you can reach us through onestarinsight.org. Finally, um, my professional website, uh, for my clinical psychology practice, which uh, is based in North Carolina, but I also practice in California and do coaching anywhere in the world, uh, is dr-shoemaker.com. So uh, that's where you can find me online, but I'm looking forward to uh, talking with you here today. Me too. I had basic understandings of Crowley and the history and I learned so much. I thought the way that you had written your book was just, which by the way, is called the way of the will (laughs) for our listeners. And um, the way that you wrote it was like so straightforward because I think the teachings can be a little bit difficult for beginners. Like there's a lot to sort of absorb. And I thought that your book laid it out really, really well. I actually understood things. (laughs) Well, that's wonderful here. I I really do try to have a, a bit more of a down to earth and conversational kind of approach to, to writing in those ways. I should add the the new book, the way of the will is, is uh, in a sense, a follow up to the book called living Thelema, which came out in 2013 originally, and has also been republished more recently by wiser books. Um, that is kind of a, a more foundational set of, of topical chapters. So for those who are, uh, maybe just beginning their their exploration of uh, Thelema and uh, perhaps of Western ceremonial magic generally, the book called Living Thelema uh, of mine might might be a good companion piece to the way of the will, but they go together. And um, I think uh, beginners and more advanced people will find something useful in both of them. I would love to ask how you got started in this field like you said you are a clinical psychologist did the psychology Mm -hmm. come first or did the teachings of Crowley and interest in Thelema come first yeah interestingly I've talked to a lot of people as you can imagine about this over the years and I think a lot of people get interested in 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 magic and and Thelema first you know even in their teen years and then kind of grow from there but I had uh, aside from a very early um, dabbling in in witchcraft when I was maybe 10 years old. Um, I had sort of become, I'd grown through my, my religious upbringing as a fairly, um, uh, easygoing, uh, fairly easygoing Methodist family, not, not really much, uh, required of me there, but I'd come through college and, and was more or less an atheist by the time I got into graduate school and my, my psychology doctor program. And, um, but, but I'd always been fascinated by the work of Carl Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist, um, because, his theories encompassed a lot of the mystery of being a human that I think was missing in, in other psychological approaches uh, with space for mythology and spirituality and a, and a 
religious um, approach to inner life, even if one wasn't operating within a religious tradition per se. So that was calling to me, although I didn't recognize it as a spiritual calling. But uh, I found some work by um, a man named Israel Regardi, who was for a while a follower of Crowley's and uh, you know, a legitimate scholar in his own right. And he wrote a book called The Middle Pillar, which is about Kabbalistic psychology um, through a Jungian frame. Um, and that just blew my mind open because here was here was a spiritual path that was psychologically informed and connected to Jung. But in that book, Rigardi referenced Crowley all over the place. And that was my entree into exploring Crowley himself. And uh, I didn't have to read too much Crowley before I realized that the silly controversies that are mostly in the, in the public eye really had nothing to do with his life's work, which was an entirely um, serious and uh, heartfelt an attempt to get people to spiritually advance. So that was that was my weird path to where I am now. I know I find it fascinating. I'm one of those few that did not take any psych classes in college. Uh-huh. <laughs> so when I come to it later in life, I find the whole concept very interesting. And Carl Jung has obviously influenced so much of kind of what we know and understand in witchcraft without knowing that it comes yeah. from Carl Jung. So I always mm-hmm. find those books and teachings fascinating. And Crowley is a fascinating figure himself but like you said there are so many little controversies with him that yeah, yeah. some people kind of avoid him any of his teachings um because of those things but when you look at it like the his life and controversies are really separate from the teachings yeah. that came from it and also compared to what's happening in the world today and you know i always like to say you know what what's crowley accused of uh you know um in essence, he was a hippie about 40 years too early <laughs> and got you know crucified for that. And what was the equivalent of tabloids at the time, like National Enquirer level crap, you know, um, and all that stuff about, you know, basically anything you've heard about Crowley that involves him harming people or wanting to or being evil or, you know, whatever. That's that's all silly stuff that grew out of those early 20th century tabloids. And when you look at people dropping bombs on people and stuff like that, are we really going to be mad at Crowley for being a a hippie too early? I I don't think so. Um, But the main misunderstanding I think of his work grows out of some of his writings, which, you know, are dense (laughs) in places. And, (laughs) and he didn't assume he, he was not very good at, understanding what beginners didn't understand so you know starting from the ground up and sort of explaining things was not his forte so um it takes a while to kind of let his his writings sink in enough to get what he's talking about but he also often would write with a pretty wicked sense of humor i use that with a small w wicked uh and um and an awareness that if people were going to read only superficially into his work, they're going to misunderstand it. So he might as well have fun with it. But one of the, the, the central tenets of Thelema is the, the idea of the true will. And that's um, where the phrase that's famous of his do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law comes from. A lot of people have misinterpreted that over the years, even going back to those 1920s era tabloids. Uh, a lot of people have misinterpreted that to mean just do whatever you want. You know, you can do whatever you want and it's complete anarchy and, you know, but it's the opposite of that in actuality. What he was trying to get across is when he says, do what thou wilt, the will in question there is essentially the will of the deepest spiritual self. You might even say the will of God uh, or God, the the will of whatever divinity an individual might personally um, resonate with. In the, in the deepest sense. So um, do what thou wilt means that your purpose in life is to understand this basic nature that you have, your true will, and to live it out. And that's your law. That is the law you should abide by, being yourself in the world uh, with joy and passion and peace and some degree of emotional detachment from it, but with... with um, a focus and efficiency as much as possible. So that's what do what thou wilt means. It doesn't mean do whatever you want. It means 
be who you are, discover who you are, be who you are, and make sure you leave room for other people to do the same. And and that's really the deepest misunderstanding and probably the most frustrating for those of us who've studied Crowley, um, something that is essentially a, a, a spiritual imperative to find oneself um, gets turned into some sort of sinister sounding thing about um, doing whatever you want. So just had to soapbox that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I appreciate it because I, I think there are a lot of misunderstandings about that. And speaking of one of the misunderstandings, we do talk about Thelema as being a spiritual practice. And you just touched on the idea mm-hmm. of divinity. Is there yeah. something specific that you need to follow if you are going to l- look more into Thelema and think, you know, this might resonate with me? Do you need to follow certain ideas of deity? That's a great question. Um, one of the most beautiful things about the Thelemic tradition for me is that the answer is no. To be a Thelemite, uh, to use that term, um, all you need to hold central to yourself is the doctrine of true will. Just following that that is the central paradigm of life. Um, and no one's going to come along and enforce that, or, you know, it's, it's, it's up to each individual, of course. But, um, Within just like any religious tradition, there are organizations within Thelema that may have their own specific oaths or, you know, teaching teaching approaches that um, that may require like um, like you might have a creed in a church or something something like if uh, if you want to join a church, you might have to uh, agree to a certain set of basic beliefs about the universe and divinity and such. So some organizations may have such things. But for the most part, um, that's about nuts and bolts stuff, like agreeing to keep uh, confidential the names of other members, agreeing to not reveal the the uh, specific nature of initiation ceremonies or things like that, just to preserve the, the power of the system. Um, it's not generally an expectation that one's personal religious experience be defined in some way from the outside. So you don't have to say, uh, you know, I believe in this particular God or goddess or thing, which I deem to be an external religious force. And that's, I will worship it. You know, it's, it's much more individualized than that. And people have a great deal of latitude to find their own, um, their own truth, really. And it's so important. I appreciate that as a practice in general, because I still have not figured out how I feel about religion. Uh, And I don't, I don't know that I ever will. It changes by the day. I appreciate that it's a spiritual practice where you can sort of figure out yourself along the way without being, you know, forced into a specific religion or deity belief. Exactly. And so it's sort of like, well, I, first of all, I know plenty of Thelemites who approach it as a, as an atheistic, um, philosophical you know approach to life as opposed to a religious one and there's no problem with that either but um essentially the the aim is to help each person discover what is divine for them and what you know sort of symbols or names or whatever they put on that is their business you know but what we try to do in a teaching organization like temple of the silver star or aa is just give people tools that we have found tend to unravel that mystery for a person, but with a huge amount of latitude for them to discover their own truth in that. So it's it's uh, very pragmatic in that sense. Here's some tools that tend to to help people find these truths. Now you go find yours with these tools, and and we'll help as best we can. You mentioned the Temple of the Silver Star. I'd love to talk more about that, about just what that is. And if somebody were interested, how would they get more information? Sure. Um, Temple of the Silver Star is a continuation of a tradition that began with the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn in the 1890s, or actually 1888, I guess it was founded. Um, Crowley eventually later joined that. Um, but the the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was a um, and it was a um, uh, Hermetic Order based on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life in terms of the the grade structure, tasks, and training and testing that correspond to 
the paths and spheres on the tree of life um, with a lot of supplementary material. So over the past 135 years, whatever it is, at this point, there have been many successor organizations. It's kind of hived off in a, a million different ways. But um, eventually that one thread of those um, successor organizations became philemic in its orientation. And we're the inheritors of that. Um, we were founded in 2008, uh, but the administration of our order, along with the administration of all the previous sort of intermediary orders going all the way back to the Golden Dawn has been uninterrupted. So we, what we have is 135 years of people living in unbroken temple teaching and training culture. So the institutional memory is amazing in terms of what we have learned in that period of time with integrations of depth psychology and, uh, of course, the Lima, um, other magical techniques and influences of other writers and thinkers across the, the past century plus. So at this point, what Temple of the Star Solar Star does is provides foundational from the ground up training in ceremonial magic, mysticism, meditation, astrology, Kabbalah, tarot. Um, but most importantly is using the framework of the Golden Dawn in terms of degree structure and such combined with the understandings of Thelema. So leading each individual to develop tools which enable them to discover their true will, their basic nature, and enunciate that in some cogent way, and then build a life that helps them live it out. So that's that's what we do in, in, in the temple, um, T-O-T-S-S dot org, that's temple of the silver star dot org, um, as a great FAQ that answers a lot of questions, uh, online applications, plenty of other information. And we do also have a, a Temple of the Silver Star YouTube channel. So there's lots of ways to interface with us um, and uh, lots of material out there. That's a really helpful resource to have because like you said, trying to dive into those works can be very dense if you are doing that on yeah. your own and just getting started. Um, Cause not everybody has the, part of a teacher. And sometimes when you know too much about a subject like Crowley did, mm -hmm. it's a little hard to go back to the beginning and convey that to people who are just starting out because you just know too much already. Right. And that is, right. is tough. So it's, uh, that's a great resource to have for people who want to be able to learn and not be overwhelmed to actually have some teachers there. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's very easy for advanced people to um, forget what they didn't know at the beginning. <laughs> and then, the, you know, they're teaching like way above that. It's like trying to teach algebra to a, a first grader. Uh, and, <laughs> really, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, so having having teachers, it, it's and in our tradition that the, the teachers and the sort of priest priestess level um, clergy that we would have are not seen as, you know, the intermediaries to the divine as if, you know, you need this person in order for you to touch the divine. It's very much in keeping with what I was saying before, our, our leaders are helping the individuals use the tools to find their own truth. Um, and that's, that's extremely important. That is extremely important. I like that sense of autonomy there because that's yeah. something that I struggled with growing up in a, Catholic background um, sure. was yeah. the, the, the priest or the conduit. You have to, you know, right. go, go to confession because the, only the priest right. can talk to God and absolve you. And it was like, I don't think I like this. And by the way, God is back behind that table, you know, yeah, God is right. back there. And you have to go to this building and talk to that person. Ex exactly. <laughs> that was, give that was this difficult. money. Yeah. That was very difficult for me to wrap my head around and part of the, reason that that didn't resonate with me growing up was that lack of access and that lack of autonomy that I was like, no, I, I think I can do this myself. I want to do this myself, yeah. but you're not giving me that ability. And I just, it was not a fan of it. I think I was a little too stubborn for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's, you have a good stubborn streak. That's, that's helpful. <laughs> Uh, and something else that I wanted to touch on that also goes along with the teaching, because I think the concept of this is really fun. And if I was on the East Coast, I, I would mm -hmm. be very interested in this. But you have mm -hmm. something later this year in October in North Carolina called the LimaCon. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. yeah. 
we, um, th there are organizational conferences for different groups uh, that have happened for a long time, but um, Philemacon, we, we started in 2019 with the conference in Minneapolis, and then we had a virtual one in 2020, and then we had a, a hybrid here in Raleigh, North Carolina in 2022, and so this is our fourth one, uh, which also will be hybrid. So we'll have an online, it is online, by the way. So we have um, virtual attendance as well as in person for this. You can go to thelemacon.org for more info on that. But um, the idea, and, and I'm one of the organizers, of course. So uh, the idea was, who do I think is fascinating to listen to? And secondarily, who do I really enjoy hanging out with for a weekend? <laughs> and um, so we've kind of collected a, a group of speakers that... Um, that are, are very well known, but uh, many of them, but but also just brands and, and people that I think are fascinating. So myself, um, Lon Milo Duquette, uh, Richard Kaczynski, um, uh, being the, probably the most well-known names among them, Harper Feist. Um, and um, it's a weekend full of hearing a lot of different perspectives on things, all with generally under the umbrella of, of what would be interesting to people interested in Philema. Um, but more broader, broader magical topics too. Um, and, uh, lots of good time for socializing and, uh, it, it, what, it, what I especially enjoy about it is this not only people who are a member of some group, it's anybody who's interested in this stuff and, uh, um, sort of non-denominational gathering. I love to see that because it's really of interest to me, all of the psychology and things that have been really going on for centuries that have influenced what mm -hmm. witchcraft and paganism is today, that we don't always think about the psychology, but I like to know how things work. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't do witchcraft if it didn't work, but I like to know right. why. Um, other than I did it and, and it was successful, I want to know the why behind it. And so much of the why behind it is psychology based and your own workings and thoughts and the way your brain functions. So all of that, how that intermixes is just fascinating to me. So I love to <laughs> hear speakers talk about it too. Yeah. It's obviously one of my favorite topics. I, I, <laughs> I, I can't believe I get away with having a life where I get to talk about it all the time, but uh, that seems <laughs> to be the case. <laughs> it, it really is. That's, I mean, a great way to look at it. You really love what you do. Love your job. I do. I do. It's a good thing because I'm not sure I'd be able to do anything else very well. So. <laughs> I do. I think I do therapy okay, and I do you know teaching Philema okay, but uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a good thing. Now I'm sure that with all of the your your day job and all of the teaching that you do, you are of course very busy. But I would love to ask if you have any spiritual witchy sort of practices that you do that are personal to you in your own life on a semi-regular basis, if you have any like daily or weekly practices? That's a great question. Um, so there are quite a few um, but it, in the course of my training over the years, you know, I've picked up a lot of what are fairly traditional Thelemic practices that are intended to be done on a, on a daily basis. One of these is called Libra Resh, and Resh is a Hebrew letter that is associated with the sun. And uh, Libra means book, of course. So Crowley would write all these instructional Libras, as you would call them, which are essentially brief, you know, three or four page documents that describe a particular practice. So Libra Resh is um, a four times a day adoration of the sun. Um, you you do it at dawn and noon and and uh, dusk and midnight, or as close to those times as you happen to be awake uh, and available. Um, and the idea is that you're attuning yourself to those natural rhythms of the solar cycle. Um, understanding that we're, you know, we're not worshiping the physical sun per se, but we are tapping into a, a, a spiritual truth represented symbolically by the sun and, and embodied physically by the sun in the sense that it's a actually in, in reality, uh, providing the opportunity to be alive to the planet, you know, warmth and sunlight and helping plants grow and all of that, you know, we, we literally do find our, our life coming from, from the sun's presence. So we kind of 
jump off that into into a spiritual understanding of okay so what's this inner spiritual equivalent of that sun within within each of us and that's one way of starting to understand what we mean in Thelemic culture by the holy guardian angel which is the idea of some see it as an external you know entity and some experience it internally but the the easy way to talk about that quickly without another half hour is um that the holy guardian angel is a way is a name that's convenient to talk about our deepest spiritual truth and self and um again that self may be seen as really more like an external divine entity like a traditional more traditional sense of a kind of personal god or goddess or um non-gendered divine thing um and it is contact with the holy guardian angel that brings full conscious awareness of the true will so a lot of the the practices in in thelemic organizations are designed to lead a person to that climactic um, spiritual awakening don't get bogged down in the name holy guardian angel which sounds very sort of silly really and crowley did that on purpose you know he didn't want people to get uh, too distracted by naming it as much as experiencing it but the reason i've gone into detail on that is because it's so central to the the doctrine and many of the practices so one of the daily things i do is libra resh which is the solar adorations um obviously some fairly simple um meditative practices of various kinds um sitting in a, a yoga crowley was instrumental in bringing yoga practice um into Western magical traditions. So um, sitting in an asana a posture for a certain amount of time and um, focusing the mind uh, in meditation, whether that be on uh, a visualized object or a mantra or the breath, uh, many other meditative practices. Um, but the basic and most important answer to your question about what I do daily is that what everyone ends up doing daily when they persist in the system is that they are increasing their understanding of what their specific tools ought to be based on their discoveries. So if you've been practicing over the years and, and using these basic tools that we offer, you'll find what your spiritual truth speaks to you. You know, does it recommend, does it sort of seem to be suggesting, okay, when I, when I meditate this way, I get more results. So I should do that kind of meditation more. When I do this kind of ritual or style of ritual or whatever, um, that's when I seem to get stronger magical results. So we learn by doing, and then we adopt the practices which actually work for us. And that's why one of the terms Crowley applied, applied to his system is scientific illuminism. It's sort of a test it out and get your results and then decide what works. It's, it's very empirical in that sense. And uh, therefore it has less to do with a doctrine or a dogma about what must work for you because we say so, and much more about what we each discover actually does work for us. Sorry for the long winded answer, but I, I think there's a lot to say there. No, I, I love the long winded answers because I think <laughs> that it helps people understand these sort of concepts that are going on behind the practice because yeah. you, you know you you're talking about these things and you can when you like get into the language of the lima get bogged down very easily like you said and like the names and what things are called uh, so yeah. that can be like a turn off for beginners but then when you get down to it you're you're basically saying this, this is a scientific method you're, you're you're testing yeah, out yeah. just what works for you. You're applying things. If it doesn't work, you try something else. And that's part one of my favorite things about witchcraft is, is trying it for myself and figuring out what works for me. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. And when you, it, it seems almost absurd to think of doing it any other way once you've tried it, <laughs> you know, like, why would I just assume that if someone else tells me this, this is the right way to do something that that was actually my right way to do it, you know? Uh, so I think the the personal experimentation uh, is makes much more sense. Yes, absolutely. My favorite part because it you know comes up all the time in even things like tarot reading or tea leaf reading mm -hmm. that different the, the we could get the exact same symbol, but it's going to mean different things for different people. If you see you know right. a snake and 
you one have been bitten by a snake as a kid or two you had pet snakes as a kid you're going to have a very different reaction to what's on that card or what's in that tea leaf reading um, based on your personal experiences exactly that's then that's an exact parallel to what young and and myself and other people influenced by him do with dream analysis you know it's not oh they had a, a dream about a snake let me look in my dream cookbook about what that means you know it's it's never that it's about what does the snake mean to them? You know, what are their associations to it? And you'd be totally off track if you just went, you know, with some some uh, encyclopedia kind of approach uh, instead of actually understanding the person's inner life. You know, exactly. I love being able to. I think that that was sort of my issue with you know being raised in doctrine religion where you just kind of have to accept it and believe it and it is what it is is that I needed that hands-on experience that worked for me and my life and be able to decipher things for myself and and put that scientific method behind everything that I'm doing yeah yeah exactly before we wrap up do you have any advice for complete beginners if they're listening to this episode and they're like, this resonates with me and I think I might like some of this teachings and I want to know more, mm -hmm. but they have absolutely no idea and this is their first experience with it. Do you have any advice for those complete beginners of what they should do or where they might get started? Absolutely. Um, so uh, the absolute easiest and freest thing you could do freest. would be to go to my YouTube <laughs> Yeah, I go to my YouTube channel, the Living Palima YouTube channel, and um, listen to some of the 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 first podcasts I ever did back in 2010, 2011, regarding uh, topics like the True Will and the Holy Guardian Angel. Um, there's a basic, it's another daily practice, a basic um, practice many people may have heard of called the Lesser Vanishing Ritual of the Pentagram, and that's... Um, you know, a good, if you want to get started with some sort of ritual practice, that's a good one. Libra Resh, I did a whole program on, I think it was actually the first one I did. Um, and then from there, you can, you can dip in for various topics like meditation and uh, breathing techniques and such. Uh, the Living Philema book would be a, a good way to get all that in black and white if you, if you want a book. Um, and let's see other other authors to look toward for for getting into Thelema. If you're interested in tarot, then Lon Milo Duquette's book called Understanding Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot um, is a fantastic introduction that has a lot of Kabbalistic um, basic Kabbalistic foundations built into it. Um, so I could point people in that direction too. Um, but um, it, really, the 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 Living Thelema YouTube is probably the most user friendly, free, and approachable way to get some basic information. That sounds great. And listeners, I will have everything linked so you can check all of that out easily. But I want to say, Doctor, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your advice and experience in a way that newbies can really understand this sort of bigger, tougher concept. Well, it's been delightful to talk to you. Thanks for having me. And listeners, like I said, I will have everything linked below so you can go check that out if this is a topic that resonates with you. And of course, I will have ThelemaCon linked as well if you want even more information and are listen interested in listening to those speakers or maybe going in person if you are in North Carolina. And that is everything that I have for you this week. I will see you next week. Need even more witchcraft in your life? Subscribe to Witch Wednesdays on Patreon and YouTube for all types of exclusive bonus content like spells, recipes, book reviews, and more, or even order personalized tarot readings and spells. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast. And you can find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com. Come on, baby.